A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the days of Ahaz, king of Judah, King Rezin of Aram and King Pekah, son of Ramaliah of Israel, went up to attack Jerusalem, but could not mount an attack against it. When the house of David heard that Aram had allied itself with Ephraim, the heart of Ahaz and the heart of his people shook as the trees of the forest shake before the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out to meet Ahaz, you and your son, Shir Jashub, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool on the highway to the fuller's field, and say to him, Take heed, be quiet, do not fear, and do not let your heart be faint because of these two smoldering stumps of firebrands, because of the fierce anger of Rezin and Aram and the son of Ramalia. Because Aram, with Ephraim and the son of Ramalia, has plotted evil against you, saying, Let us go up against Judah and cut off Jerusalem and conquer it for ourselves and make the son of Tabil king in it. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, It shall not stand, and it shall not come to pass. For the head of Aram is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. Within sixty-five years, Ephraim will be shattered, no longer a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is the son of Ramalia. If you do not stand firm in faith, you shall not stand at all. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Holds his city forever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, beautiful in elevation, is the joy of all the earth. God upholds his city forever. Mount Zion in the far north, the city of the great king. Within its citadels, God has shown himself a sure defense. God upholds his city forever. Then the kings assembled, they came on together. As soon as they saw it, they were astounded. They were in panic, they took to flight. God upholds his city forever. Today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to reproach the cities in which most of his deeds of power had been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Jerusalem! 
Woe to you, Bethsaida, for the, if, for if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, you will be exalted to heaven. Will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will be brought down to Hades. For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. In one afternoon with a friend during the time of sort of the lockdown or the COVID restrictions, I was having lunch with this friend who uh, he and I were sort of in the same, as we call it, the same bubble or the same, the same circle. So we'd get, a, we'd get along and, and get together as, much, as often as we could to alleviate that isolation that most of us had gone through. So we got talking as usual about many things in the world, positive things to lift our spirits. And then it turned, our conversation turned into the, the, the topic of uh, prayer and specifically to the topic of preaching, especially when so many things were done in those days and sometimes even today, the virtual preaching, preaching virtually to a congregation. And at this point, he, uh, he said to me, how do you feel about preaching to a virtual congregation? And this, I stopped him. And I said, no, 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 no. I'm not preaching to a virtual congregation. I am preaching to people on the other side of the camera who I know are very, very much with me in a very special way. No matter what time of the day or night, that I try to unite myself with them through the power of God's Spirit. Because you see, in celebrating the Eucharist, it's not virtual, it's a reality, a reality in our lives. So again, I keep on trying to relate every time that I am celebrating this Mass with great joy and faith to try to pass on that same faith and joy to each one of you. In other words, Jesus is not virtual. <laughs> God is not virtual. God is very, very real and very much with you today. So can you imagine, if you can, a lot of imagination, but you imagine for a few moments if you can. If Jesus were to visit you or perhaps if he was to preach to you or maybe at the Mass that you were attending in your community, what would he say about all the stuff that's going on around the world today? He probably would issue a warning like he gave to the people of Cherizon and of Bethsaida. How would you respond? Maybe, maybe like, oh, okay, I'll change. I'll change, but not right now. Maybe, maybe tomorrow. Maybe when all of these restrictions are lifted, maybe I'll change because I'll be able to see my family members, to hug my friends and to be with them. You know, something along those lines. Change. Wherever Jesus went, that he did mighty works to show the people how much God loves them unconditionally. He doesn't change. <laughs> Even we do, but he doesn't. You see, Chorism and Bethsaida had been blessed with the vision of God. They heard the good news and experienced the wonderful works which Jesus did for them in those days. So why was Jesus then so upset with those communities? He uses the word woe. Now, we have maybe a little different of, of a usage today because sometimes we'll say, whoa, 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 hang on a second, no, don't do that. No, 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 don't do that. Whoa, let's change, whoa, whoa, stop. Jesus is calling attention that woe can be an expression of sorrowful pity, of grief, of maybe 
the destruction which comes as a result of human sin and ignorance of God and the commandments. So let's, whoa, let's stop sinning. Let's reopen our hearts to not the, the virtual, they're not virtual, they're commandments and they're real. The people who heard the gospel perhaps were very likely indifferent to the words of Jesus in those days. See, God's word <laughs> is, is life-giving. It gives us everything we need. It saves us from destruction, the destruction of heart, of mind, and souls, as well as body. Jesus rebukes them for doing nothing, thus the issue that they had not learned. Have you, have you learned, have you continued to learn and to be open to God's word? How would you learn that? Well, you see, repentance demands change. Our first goal is to go and repent and then change, a change of heart and a way of life. Be it then one-to-one, -one, and we're talking to one another and repent and be kind to each other, perhaps in a large group, perhaps, perhaps, hopefully, if you can, to return to your parish for to listen to God's word being proclaimed to you and then even here to change and be open to that word and restructure yourself to live according to his needs. In short, Jesus' anger is not directed to you. It is directed towards the sin and everything which binds us from doing the will of God. So I ask you, do you receive God's word with faith and obedience or with mm, doubt or indifference? I'll change tomorrow. Just, just leave me alone for now. Experts warn us that COVID in general is not over yet. However, many restrictions have been lifted, allowing many virtual encounters to be turned into the personal presence. And that's a beautiful thing, such as mass attendance for those who are able to do so. And that is a beautiful, life-giving thing. Thanks to so many of you, our mission to bring God's word to you is a beautiful blessing for us who do it and for you who receive it and receive it with a contrite heart. And God willing, one day you too can join your community to celebrate that beautiful unity, especially in receiving the body of Jesus that you can do at the church. Or maybe, maybe perhaps if you can't go to the church for whatever reason it might be, maybe physical inability, to contact your local parish and ask your pastor to please, if you could arrange to pay you a visit, or if he's really busy, to maybe send a Eucharistic minister to you to be united with Jesus in receiving the body and blood of Christ. So having listened to his word, as weak as it is for me, I'm not the best, but as weak as it is for me to try and open your heart, try and open yourself, to try and change, to know that God is not virtual, that he is right there with you right now. You're not alone. And please go a step further. Pick up the phone, call your local parish, and ask if they could please, please bring you the body of Christ to be fully united with our community and therefore one day with God. In the meantime, please continue to pray for us to bring this message to you. And I guarantee you, and I'm sure my brothers and sisters here, would also pray for you. So prayer both ways until one day it's one way in heaven. God bless you.